And when the intention of the creator is carried out well, that makes something good. That makes something beautiful. And we see David in scripture. I mean, the scripture I'm about to read, it's just such a profoundly incredible scripture because we see through hundreds of years before David, uh, God commands um, them to build the, the Ark of the Covenant where his presence would rest and it would be in Moses' tabernacle. And uh, that was really as far as we got with God's presence resting as a place to meet. And then uh, uh, when, when Eli was in charge, we see the Ark of the Covenant. They lose the Ark of the Covenant and they don't have it in Saul's era. So David gets back, he unites the kingdoms and the first thing he does, he brings back the presence of God. But he doesn't bring it to Shiloh where it sat in the tent to be accessed once a year, but he actually brought it back and he made another tent called David's Tabernacle and he hired thousands of musicians and singers to minister 24-7 before the Lord. He did more quote unquote, for the presence of God than, than, than anybody that we have seen. And this is when this scripture that we're about to read enters in 2 Samuel 7. 2 Samuel 7. Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house that the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around. The king said to Nathan the prophet, see now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, go and do all that's in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, will you build a house for me to dwell in? A couple things about this passage. This is when God makes the Davidic covenant with David. He is so pleased with David's heart that he comes and he makes the covenant. Oh yeah, by the way, the Messiah is gonna come through your lineage. The throne is gonna last forever. And oh yeah, you know, Jesus will even eternally have the name son of David. That's how pleased I am with this cry because everybody before this said, yeah, I mean, God said, just put his presence in a tent and that's what he said. And so he's happy, he's cool. I'm like, we're good. David's like, no, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do more. But then he walked into his house and he saw beautiful cedar walls, there's artwork, there's gold, there's bronze. Everything in this palace has been set up with intentionality. And David lays in his bed and he goes, I can't do this. It's not right for me to live in a house of intentionality that's beautiful and for the Lord to be in a tent. And even though God had never expressly said anything, he cried out, said, God, could I give that to you? And we see the, 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 the vulnerable heart of God comes back and says, man, I have dwelt in tents since the beginning of the people. Would you build a house for me? That is actually what I want. <laughs> and now here we are thousands of years later, we are called the house of God. We are still under this house <laughs> that David built called God's presence. And, uh, you know, we, what if we carried that same heart of intentionality with our time and even the space of where we meet with God? And uh, th there's something that is called environment design that is something that's really interesting to me. It's just kind of like a new thing that, that people are hyped on. And I, I, I like it too. And the idea of environment design is you have negative environment design and positive environment design. So for example, let's say you want to begin working out. Well, uh, you know, what happens typically is someone will buy uh, a treadmill and then they put it, you know, in their basement. And then every time they go to get on the treadmill, they're like, I don't want to do this. I'm going to grab a bag of Doritos and chill on the couch. Why? Because the treadmill was in the exact same space that they are used to coming home, kicking up their feet, eating Doritos. Everything in the environment is designed for something else. And so it's, you're making double the work to try to get there. And so they say, do, do some negative environment design. And so create, put the treadmill in a space that only exists for that one thing. Or better yet, get a gym membership where you're not going to walk into the gym and be like, man, I want to kick up my feet and eat a bag of Doritos. Like you're going to be like, well, I'm here. I might as well do this. And so pack a gym bag and have it by the floor, by the door to remove all those obstacles. So that's kind of the, the idea of, of uh, environment design. And, and uh, you know, I, I've noticed like we have 
intentionality to our homes. And it's interesting, like we put the first pick and the first priority. Uh, I mean, honestly, typically on what? The TV. It's like the furniture in our house is set up like you might be like, oh, I don't I don't know. I'm not into design stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, no, you are. <laughs> Right? Because you're like, man, we got to get this couch. It's got to be so comfy. It's got to be angled this way. It's got to be able to see this TV that we got to put here. And so then let's move everything here, 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 here. What are we doing? No, we're doing environment design. But then, you know, when it comes to our time with the Lord, we were like, oh, what's, what, what does it matter? I can do that wherever. It's like, yeah, you, you can do it wherever, but there's something about making the place where you meet beautiful about making it special. And, and, you know, for my wife and I, that means we actually have like a detached space at our house that, that everything in that environment is just designed for the purpose of spending time with Jesus.